welcome back. We're almost at the end of our journey together with Chompy, but really, we're just getting started. Chompy is designed to evolve over time, and its functionality can be expanded through alternate firmware and under the hood settings. So without further ado, No doubt you've been filling your Chompy up with loads of samples and loops, and you might be wondering what to do when you start running out of space. You can always make room by deleting presets you no longer want. Similar to copying and saving presets, we can execute a delete command. To delete a preset, hold the Chompy key and press this red delete key, followed by the preset slot you wish to delete. Confirm the action by pressing Chompy once more, or if you decide you don't want to delete the preset, Pressing the red delete key instead of the Chompy key will cancel the action. But what if you love every sample filling your Chompy, or you just want to spark some fresh inspiration with a new sample pack? A number of useful functions and options are available to us by mounting Chompy's micro SD card to a computer. First, make sure Chompy's powered off, and then using your fingernail or an eighth inch jack, carefully press the micro SD card until you hear the click of the slot spring releasing. Slowly let go of the card to eject it. Using the proper adapter, plug the card into your computer. The card will appear as an external device on your computer. Here you'll see a .bin file containing Chompy's current firmware. Updating is as easy as deleting the old file and dragging the bin file for the new firmware onto the SD card. Make sure you empty the trash before ejecting. We won't be going over the various firmware versions in this series, but you can visit the link in the description to see the latest available firmware versions and what they have to offer. While we're here, we can also see all of the samples being stored on Chompy. Notice the name of each audio file reflects the type of sample, as well as the sample's bank and slot number. Chompy works with 16-bit, 48 kilohertz WAV files. For every sample slot, there are two audio files. One is the standard WAV file and the other is an optimized version at double speed that gets created automatically by Chompy when booting up. As you continue to use Chompy, it's likely you'll want to make room for more samples. To do this, copy the files you wish to remove and paste them in a safe place on your computer or external hard drive. You can then delete them from the card or replace them with new samples by dragging audio files onto the card and naming them accordingly. Be sure to check out the sample hub on Chompy's website for fresh, inspiring sounds. Finally, we want to go over some helpful settings and functions that you can customize via the Chompy Config Tool, an ever-evolving application that can be accessed through any web browser. Under the Resources section of the Chompy Club website, you'll find a Config tab. This is where we will access and adjust our settings. The first option we can change is called Record Latch. So far, when sampling, we've held down the Chompy button to sample and released it to stop sampling. By changing this value from off to on, we can press the Chompy button once to start sampling, and again to stop. This opens up the possibility to sample sources that require more than one hand to operate. The next couple of settings allow you to set which MIDI channels Chompy sends and receives from its MIDI ports. Next, we'll see an option to toggle tape slew on and off. Normally, Chompy's looper engine mimics the gradual speeding up and slowing down of a physical tape machine. Turning this setting off will cause both the play button as well as the purple transport knob to instantly start and stop. I especially enjoy this setting for creating skipping scrub effects with the transport knob while the looper stopped, jumping back and forth between forward and reverse playback. The monitor position setting sets the default routing mode when Chompy boots up. You can still switch to any one of Chompy's three routing modes using the shift and volume encoder combo. See the previous video for more information on routing modes. The final setting that can be changed is pitch quantize in shift menu. You may remember pitch adjustments by default are unquantized, so they don't snap to musical values. So far, we've been able to achieve this snapping by holding the shift button while making pitch adjustments to either the pitch engine of the sample or the playback speed of the looper. By changing this setting from off to on, we can make it work the other way. Making an adjustment to pitch now ensures that changes are quantized to musical values of fifths and octaves. Holding shift while turning will give you unquantized fine-tune adjustments. 
Now that we've reconfigured Chompy's options, we can click the download button on the configurator page and a file named options.json will be downloaded. Replace the options.json file on Chompy's SD card to enable these settings the next time Chompy boots up. And now, let's go back to Chompy. I'll carefully make sure the card is aligned with the slot on the back of Chompy, and then lock it into place by pressing the card until I hear a click. Now, let's boot Chompy up and have some more fun. That covers it for now. Thanks for going on this journey with us. We hope you're feeling equipped and inspired to get jamming. See you around.